Fenton and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Okay, this could be interesting for some of you guys. You may never have seen it. This is a Vanessa rig. And what it does, you suspend the model in the cradle. Now you can either do it by the wings, you can either turn this through 90 degrees and put the straps around the wings, if it's a biplane. There's lots of different ways you can do this. Now, the easiest way is to, to do it around the fuselage like this. So what you do is it's hanging in this uh, cradle, or the Venice rig. The ropes are looped around a broom handle that's passed through a piece of wood. I'll show you a close-up in a minute. And you can turn the broom handle, it's got a bit of friction on it, to alter the pitch of the aircraft. So what I've done here is I've set it up so that the, the aircraft is sat perfectly level in its flying attitude. Okay? Then what we look at is the line, the plumb bob, that's hanging down from the very centre of the pivot point. And it's important, that's where it is. Now the camera angle and everything is making this a little bit difficult for you to see, so I'll turn the model very slightly. And you should be able to see where the pendulum is pointing. It'll stay there. Now, on the wing, on the root, there's a tiny little mark in pencil, and it is about five millimetres in front of where the pendulum is. That means the model C of G is five millimetres back from where it needs to be. The uh, design spec says that this should be at 1.30. Uh, me and my friend flew hours the yellow ones and we found 125 was probably a little bit more to my liking anyway. So that pencil mark is at 125. It's currently at 130 so it's probably okay to go at that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cover off, the cockpit cover off, take the battery tray out and move the battery forward to make it a little bit more nose heavy. All right. Okay as you can see now with the battery all the way forward, the plumb bob almost on the pencil mark um, and that's with an extra small battery balanced on the nose so I do need to add a little bit of nose weight to this and that's hardly surprising because the uh, the paint of you know the class cut paint the extra paint the majority of the paint is behind the CFG whether it be on the wing you know the area behind the CFG is larger on the wing and the fuselage area behind the CFG is is greater than in front so it's hardly surprising that we've got to add a little bit of weight to counter, counterbalance the paint that we've added, the additional paint. So I'll put some weights on it and find out exactly how much weight I need. And then I'll uh, turn that into lead and then put it on the bulkhead as close to the nose as I can. But that's how the Vanessa works. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? But it's an easy way to do a big model, a heavy model. Um, you know, this one is only £10, but if you were trying to set up the CFG of a model that weighs £50, it's a slightly different story. And as you can imagine, this is a far more accurate way of doing it than turning the model upside down and balancing it on your fingertips. And if the model is fairly heavy and very accurate, it's probably got very thin wing skins and you've got a good chance of poking your fingers through the wing skins trying to balance it on your fingers. So, this is a much safer way of doing it. As it turns out, as you can see, I've added a five cell NIM pack to the nose and that's brought the balance point spot on. So I have got room for that receiver pack in the in the front bay where the proper receiver pack is, so I shall just add that as weight. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, or the equivalent in lead. So there you go. That's how you balance a model using the Vanessa rig. So now you can see the Oster is in the Vanessa rig. And you can see, even though it's a high wing aircraft, the strapping system works reasonably well. 
the jar you see at the back with the screwdriver sticking up is not altering anything, it's stopping the model swinging, otherwise with the slightest breeze it moves. The cowl is not attached quite right, so it will actually push the weight slightly further forward, but at the moment it's only 3 mil out from where it should be according to the plan. So by the time we add a full tank of fuel, that will be, you know, in front of the CRG. So um, we'll just have to not fly it down below, say, half a tank full first. And if the CRG feels good with half a tank full in it, then we can let it come down a little bit further. Otherwise, I add a little bit more weight. Um, I'm still quite new, uh, new to flying models, IC models, where the fuel burns away as you're flying. So the CFG is going to change. It's strange to me, with electric, the CFG is the same at the beginning as it is at the end. So um, I think because we're within two or three millimetres of the CFG, empty or dry, by the time we've added some fuel, and this has got a 16 ounce fuel tank in it as well, so that's a lot of weight on the front, I think we'll be fine. But while I was here, I'd show you how I uh, weigh my models as well, just to... Uh, Makes it easier. Right, so I've got three really cheap, I think they were between five and ten pounds each, these little scales. Um, and they only read up to five kilos, so 15 kilos in total. However, the main two that will be under the main, uh, under the wing, obviously are going to be the limiting factor, because um, that's where most of the weight will be. So just to make sure they're uh, calibrated, I've got a hundred gram weight here. Not that they're calibrated, but, you know, just that they're giving the right sort of readings. Oops, that one's gone off. Due to inactivity. And there we go. They're all reading 100 grams. So that's great. So what we do, we position one under each of the main gear. The port, we've got 2012 for starboard. We've got 2042, so the starboard wing is a little bit heavier. And for the, uh, for the tail, we've got 603. So if you add all the numbers together, you get 4.658 kilos. That's with the battery, so that's ready to fly. So it's easily under the five kilo light scale uh, classification um, and for those of you who are still imperial 4.658 kilos is 10.3 pounds so I think that's pretty good